Hello, everyone. I'd like to start off with how many people have actually been involved in art education somewhere along the line? Have you, who's been to an art school? Was, was it a positive experience? For how many of you was it just an invasion of your personal space? A number of you would be wondering, you know, um, why is it that um, publisher of an art magazine and a, and a writer and curator are, um, are hosting a, a talk about education? Well, Randian, when we started it, um, was an experiment. We didn't know, we, we started in Shanghai, we didn't know whether we were going to last one month, two months, one year, whatever. And as I say to everyone, unfortunately the experiment worked and we're still here. And now we've got a captive audience. Um, what we want to do today is, is discuss around the topic of education. You know, what's it for in, in art? Why is it important? What sort of role can it play? What are its potentials? And at this point, I'm going to hand over, first of all, to Thomas to open up the discussion about what is uh, education in a sort of a f the f philosophical grundnorms, the, 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 the basic uh, foundation stones of how we're going to then expand the conversation. Thomas, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Chris. I'm, I'm, I'm just too comfortable sitting down so I won't stand up because then you also would have to stand up and I think that would make it very nice. Um, well, first of all, to answer your question to the audience who's been in an art school, I have, but not for too long. I had the questionable pleasure of being kicked out of art school in Berlin um, in the mid-80s. That tells you how old I am. At this time, obviously, art education in, in Germany was pretty much uh, very old-fashioned still. Um, I remember all the professors there, they were male, close to 70, and their names were always something man. So, I mean, it, it was just impossible. And I asked a lot of questions uh, to them, and they couldn't answer those questions, and they were really annoyed. I think that contributed to my very short period there. So I'm very curious to, to understand how you deal with your students. And um, maybe the first you know, question that I have for you is, how do you organize um, teaching, and what are your goals in, in in educating future artists, because I have a hard time thinking about what it really is that an artist can learn from a professor these days. Oh, well, I've been, uh, I, I'm Kurt Chen. I've been working in a Chinese university for over 26 years. Uh, over the, I, I think if I answer this question, the first thing that I would like to say is, uh, you know, you, you're right. When I was a student, uh, I always think that uh, our professor was trained maybe in the 50s. And how can you know, those knowledge in the 50s can benefit the student who grew up in the, in the 80s? So um, uh, I, I always remind myself, okay, if I want to be a good teacher, I need to teach. I need to, not only I, I need to convey some knowledge that I know to the student, but also I need to learn from them from time to time. Otherwise, I can be, I, I, I'm part of the teacher, I mean, my role is part of the teacher, but uh, I also see myself as, uh, you know, their comrade, try to be. Of course, they do still feel that, you know, in the classroom, I'm still, you know, the, 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 the powerful man. Uh, the second thing would be um, when you when you teach in when when you uh, when you teach in the university. For for example, in Hong Kong, we have um, every year our department is not that big. We have around thirty students graduated each year. Uh, according to my experience, only around three students can be an artist. So it comes to my mind that, okay, what, what else, what happened to the rest of the 27 students? I mean, after they graduate, they can be an artist. What can they do? So I came up with an idea, okay, we, maybe we do not need that many artists, but we need uh, art mediator. Art mediator means that they can work in different sectors. For example, be a gallerist, or even somebody who, who would open a noodle shop. But or start an art magazine. Hmm? 
and and can and can you know um, you know by cooking or decorating the noodle shop to invent something to to produce something new uh, as a contribution to the society. So why not? So I mean the art market actually I think the door is quite narrow. You know you have to know understand the art market. You you you, you got to bear a lot of uh, you know uh, lonely time. And, and maybe you need to do a lot of things like shaking hand in the opening and get people to know you, you know, uh, from time to time. So all these kind of things may not be, if you are really, you're, you are a real artist, maybe your temperament may not really shoot this kind of job. So um, my uh, um, way of teaching have uh, somehow shift in the last 10 years is uh, not just produce artists, but trying to get more people to think, especially in their own capacity, whether if they are not a painter, it's okay. If they, you know, uh, study some other subjects such as uh, sociology or even business administration, I think that will eventually expand the scope of uh, art education in, in, in some way. Uh, Philippe, you were uh, just before when we were having a conversation with you, and you acknowledge you're not an artist, you're not a teacher, you're the director of the most famous um, art school in Europe, and you describe your role as curator. Could you explain that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the answer I will bring most is I don't know. And uh, because it's, yeah, we, I don't know why at some point Stelo Schuler decided to hire curators as their director or as their dean. And it started in the 80s with Caspar Koenig. And in fact, Caspar Koenig inherited one of these situations, a typical German school with a lot of Malerfürsten, they, they uh, call that in German, like uh, painting kings. Um, and he started to change the school, although we, we still keep that system. So the system is that it's a couple of professors that put together their classes. So you apply for the Gordon class or the Silman class. But the funny thing is, I think, what is very specific at Stelo Schule is a couple of things. But one, when you come to these classes, the moment you enter in this class, the whole world changes. Like, the Mahler first becomes the apprentice. In fact, they select together who comes in, but the moment you're in, it's kind of like the inverse. They start to kind of like take in from what the students bring. Um, all in their own way, you know, like, uh, in order, one of the very beautiful anecdotes of a recent uh, phenomenon, or not a phenomenon, a recent event, when Peter Fischli arrived at the school, um, in order to know the students that were already there, that he inherited from the class of Simon Starling, and the new students, they went on a hiking tour around Frankfurt Airport. You know, arguably the biggest airport in Europe, like the best school in Europe. <laughs> um, and the, the idea was to, and it, it connected a little bit to Fischli's own work. We, he did these slideshows about airports globally, you know, and it was kind of like to know each other. And they hiked, walking around the airport, they carried the barbecue, they got arrested a couple of times because they wanted to get as close as possible to the airport, walking. And they That's had not a at tent. all suspicious. Hmm? That's not at all suspicious. Nowadays, it's, uh, <laughs> it's very, very accepted to do these kind of things. But it's a kind of thing like the professors, most of the professors that, it's not that they don't know anything. It's not that they don't know things. It's not that they don't want to communicate things. Everybody does, but it's just to say like everybody does it in its or her own way to create, develop, or form the class, you know? And they, they listen a lot to the students. And, and one of the most important things when we talk about cooking, in fact, we want those people to decide in these five years that they're in our school, some are less because they come from other schools, whether they are going to be an artist or not. We, just, we take it so seriously in that sense that we know that it's the most difficult profession in the world um, for many reasons. And of course they can, in the course of these years, they decide whether they're going to do it or not. They can become something else, but we don't provide them with skills for something else. We maybe provide them with a mind that is also useful some, somewhere else. On the other hand, when you come in the state of Schule, you don't see as you cannot, you don't find an art school. You know, it's a very small place. It's a it's a, a place with a couple of classes. Would one would say rooms? There are, there are people. We are maybe arguably 
the most reputed art school in Europe, but we're also, and that's not arguably, that's proven, the worst uh, infrastructure <laughs> that, that, that an art school can have, you know? We, we really like, it's very, very bad. Um, we hope to invest now, but anyway. So, but the first thing you encounter next to the office of the administrative direction is an experimental kitchen. Because for us, food is very important. Not to become cooks, but because we want to eat well. I, I have to <laughs> tell everyone in the room that while we were sitting in the green room, the main topic of conversation was food and nothing to do with art whatsoever. And we decided actually we were going to change the topic of the com of conversation entirely and just talk <coughs> about food. So we'll, we'll be moving on to dim sum in a moment. <laughs> so, I don't know, what, what do you want to know, <laughs> is the thing. It's like, I think it's in interesting also at some point to, to know what people want to know about this place. The, the thing is, the Sedo Schule is, well, maybe like Randian, or it's kind of an ongoing experiment since Kasper Koenig changed that. So we, are, we, are, we don't know, we don't have a method or a program or a system. What we do, though, and that's very old-fashioned, is trying to bring interesting individuals mm -hmm. together, be it professors or students or others, even people that are running the workshops. But, but that's actually my next question is, who chooses the educators? The other educators and the students. What's the process? But that's exactly, there's, a, there's an iterative process in there that, and, I mean, how, what's the process, for instance, at Chinese University in Hong Kong? Well, you know, uh, um, Chinese University is basically, you know, belongs to, um, you, you know, just one of the university fully subsidized by the government. That's why uh, we have to follow a lot of, you know, regulation set uh, by the Hong Kong government. Basically, the Hong Kong government do have a lot of control, uh, including a lot of uh, assessment from time to time, you know, like... Uh, uh, one year assessment and three years um, assessment, you, you, you end up doing a lot of uh, administrati administration work rather than you know, on, on the real you know, research project or even your own creation. So teaching is actually just one third of your, of your workload. And, uh, and now running a business, uh, like uh, you know, for example, uh, an art department in, in, in Hong Kong, uh, you have to cope with uh, so many difficulties. One of the reasons is uh, fine art is, when compared to some other subjects, such as, uh, you know, like uh, um, medicine, law, architecture, you know, those, sub those uh, disciplines, fine arts are regarded as, uh, you know, of lower priority, always, especially in, in, the, in the eye of um, the um, vice chancellor or the, the, the management uh, team. Um, we're, we're trying to, I, I think in, the, in, the, in recent year, we're actually, we're doing better because of, because of the so-called uh, creative industry. I mean, in the name of the economic growth, really give an excuse for, for the, for the, for the uh, decision maker to think about, okay, whether the fine art the, the artists can can make some contribution to economy. So I mean, even Art Basel, you know, here is uh, one of the things that, uh, like, um, I mean, it's a easy tool for the for people in a management level who do not know art to understand, you know, the on on certain aspects of the value of art, which is uh, the market price or even the investment. Uh, I, I would say that this is a you know beautiful um, mis misunderstanding. But the thing is, uh, we do take the advantage of this in order to persuade the university to to give us uh, more resources. And I think this is one of the reasons why, starting in the year year of uh, 2000, there are you know uh, more and more art program being emerged in 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 Hong Kong which include, you know, like a private school like SCAD and also local university like uh, 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 Baptist U, they do have a school of uh, visual art and even private institution like Hong Kong Art Center, they have the Hong Kong Art School and many more top-up degree program, which uh, is now allow more uh, flexibility for uh, courses of fine arts. So I would say um, after the year of 2000, now is uh, already 15 years. 
uh, I, I think you know the the art, the growth of art market and also the you know the uh, production of uh, art student really get together to make the whole situation. I mean, uh, I would say the bloom of art in Hong Kong. But of of course, you know uh, the market and the real. I mean, the the student who work in the art field still keep a very Keep, keep some distance. One of the reasons is, you know, you know now in, in Hong Kong Art Basel, you see not many Hong Kong art, artists were given the chance to feature their work. You know, many of them still, you know, from international. But, but let me, before we answer everything at once, let me ask a couple of very basic questions about student numbers, for example. You know, how many students do you have every year or how much students do you have in, in the art department? That is, that is something that interests me because, I mean, the art world has been, is a growth industry, right? It's growing bigger and bigger and bigger every year. It seems more art fairs, more artists, more everybody. And um, so that's one question that I have. And then maybe also a little bit of an idea of the institutional traje uh, trajectory because um, art schools, especially in Germany, they tend to wanting to become universities and hand out degrees, PhDs and all that because for them it's business and also mind you in, in German universities you pay a very low tuition, almost none, which is very very different to any other country in the world that I know where you have to pay a lot of money. So there's a lot of students applying to become, uh, to, to enter art schools in, in, in Germany and um, that, that, that's just to, to give you a little bit of a background information for, for the conversation we've had. So maybe just a very quick question. How many students do you educate every year? How many students do you have in, in the department? And the same for you, Philip. Our department is uh, really s small. Uh, uh, for undergraduate program, we have only around 30-something uh, for one cohort. Mm -hmm. And for our graduate school, we, uh, we, which include MFA and MA and even PhD, we have around 20, uh, 25 oh. each year. Nice. So actually our, our graduate school is uh, quite big. And, and, and the other thing I would like to mention is, uh, um, uh, you know, research university like uh, Chinese university do have um, more money for the uh, uh, subsidi sub subsidized for the uh, graduate student, graduate program. For example, I mean, for a graduate student who can, you know, like, they, they can have some uh, subsidized, like uh, 14,000 uh, 14, a month, you know. Mm. So they, only, they, they still need to give, uh, you know, give, give the tuition, but they, have, they should have enough money to okay. survive. What, what's the regular tuition to, if, if you're not subsidized? Or, um, it's uh, 40,000 for one year. I, I'm not so sure the figure. Hong Kong dollars. Yeah, Hong Kong yeah. dollars. It's not that much. Compared to US, yeah, it's, yeah. it's actually affordable. Um, so, yeah, these numbers are relative. It's, it sounds very uh, little. Um, we have around about 200 students in the school. Um, kind of divided over five years. You can start, when you start the first year, it's five years. That's to German comparison very small. Um, there are approximately 30 each year that uh, finish their studies. Then I, that I, I talk about the art department. We have 15 students that do curatorial studies on top of that, but they are in fact students that go to university. But we share the, um, the course. And then we have around 50 students in architecture, but that's a very different type of program. That's a master, that's two years, and that's tuition based. But the art department is for free, um, and it's five years, and you don't get a master or anything. You get only a paper, a diploma, in the German uh, old-fashioned way, um, that says you have studied so many years at the State of Schule with this type or another professor. That's basically what it is. You can put that in your bathroom and yes. be happy every morning. Um, but how 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 is the the um, how do you organize the, the 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 teaching? Like in in Frank in Frankfurt, it's classes, right? So as a student, you get assigned 
to one professor or one professor chooses you? And are there any other courses that are mandatory or things like that? Um, there is nothing mandatory, but there is three other three professors that don't have a class, including myself, um, which is Isabella Graf, and she teaches theory. Um, Daniel Birnbaum, former dean, who teaches philosophy, and I myself teach uh, art history. We offer this in seminars during the semester, and it depends on how interesting we are, whether we have a lot of students or not. Uh, how many students do you have, Philippe? Mm, 20, 30. You're, not, you're doing quite well. <laughs> it uh, depends. Uh, our, our, our university is just like some other university, because it's a regular university, it's not like an art school, so uh, we have to comply to all the regulation that, uh, you know, uh, like some other department, like every year, we, every term we have uh, 13 weeks of teaching time and normally each professor need, should need to uh, teach two courses at least for in, in one term. Uh, plus, you know, you have to, or you have to uh, do your own research because every year you need to report to the department what kind of things you have been doing. You know, for example, research and even uh, social contribution and even you know your teaching, so-called teaching evaluation by the student, you know, it's very very regular. It's not like independent art school. We we can have such kind of freedom as uh, you mentioned, but it's, but it's it's also a freedom that has been cultivated. You know, we we today I had a conversation with Raimundo Smarashovska, a very good friend curator, about how to stay small. It's a very important thing nowadays. Capitalism. Success in capitalism forces entities to grow. You start with a small gallery, it becomes a big gallery. You start with a small magazine, it becomes a big magazine. How, and it's, it's very, very complicated to, st even if you're very successful, to stay small, to keep it manageable, to stay. And the advantage is, like I, I just told Chris before, that we do this with only 5 million euros a year. That's the money we have. It's very little compared to the universities. Mm. They ask me, do you want more money? I say, I say, well, yes, a bit, you know, in order to do that. But not too much, because if we have too much money, we appear on the radar. We want to stay under the radar. That nobody tells us, like, you receive so much, so you have to do that, that, and that, and that. So we try to kind of, like, keep low profile on the political side, keep low profile on the managerial side, having as least bureaucracy as possible, having an atmosphere where we, you know, the moment we have, the school is famous for its school restaurant. We have a chef in the school restaurant. No, really, it's a, and it's, it's a, that, that was my next question. What no, no, portion no, of the revenue actually goes on the canteen? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the canteen is a very important social place and it's, and it's much better, you know, like we are not soldiers. You know, soldiers, they eat bad so they fight better but we make art so that's a very different story we eat good it's a very important thing and where I wanted to go was oh yes <laughs> <laughs> yes if we would become like a real state university then they would close our canteen and then we would all have to eat bad <laughs> in another thing so it's, it's gonna be revolution it kills the school so it's one of those elements would revolution be good uh, the revolution would be like okay let's find somewhere else our five million you know <laughs> And no, the moment if they if they really would, how do you say it in English? Verstaatlichen. Uh, if they really would make us a state, a nationalized school, I think I will have a general. Uh, how do you say it? Like we would, all the professors would quit immediately. They would know that this was not going to be fun anymore, and the students would follow them. And I think the first thing I would do is kind of like I start the initiative with, I don't know, some private funders or whatever to kind of like, okay, then we we don't we don't continue. We go somewhere else. That's why we also constantly use as a lever in the negotiations with states. You know, like it's like, listen, don't mess with us. We don't cost you a lot. Let us do. We don't have to write assessments because our success is outside in the art world, and that's where. Read magazines, go to exhibitions, count how many former state of shoulders are there. That's enough, instead of writing mission statements or assessments, you know? It's kind of like, okay, it's a bit secret. Governments don't like that, that they don't, they cannot count and make us accountable for all the things we do. And they like, what is the methods and what is this and what is that? I know that's not very, uh, 
kind of like uh, desired from from the, the the kind of the organizational modus. But that's why we want to stay small. That's why we want to that they they don't have time for us. They need to they need to dispute about the 15 million and the 20 million schools. And that's a very interesting position. And it's something that it's all it's it's a very precarious balance also with the professors. We are very successful but we have very bad infrastructure. But the moment we want all that, we need more money. And the moment we need a lot more money, we will we will have to be accountable for what we do. And I, I think that's that's a big difference. I have a totally different question now because um, I don't know, we're sitting here in Hong Kong, which is sort of an exceptional place if you look at the map. And um, so I'm wondering uh, where do the students come from that, that you teach? And in, also in, in Frankfurt, I mean, it's not only German students anymore. Everybody wants to come to Frankfurt, I guess, to Städelschule because it's famous. How is that here? Do you have students from mainland China, for example, or, or other places around the world? Oh well, yeah, especially the graduate school, we have uh, so many mainland uh, Chinese students because we do have an art history department. And obviously many students, I mean a local, local student, it's, there is a tendency that local student would like to be an artist rather than an art his, historian. That's why our graduate school, I would say over 80% of the students uh, is, uh, came from mainland China. And for uh, and, and for uh, the, the, the undergraduate student, uh, oh, actually, there, we, 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 we did have a one, one uh, MA uh, studio program, graduate program, which is uh, quite unique, uh, as I you know, heard about you know, the other you, uh, art school, what, 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 what your school is doing. It's, uh, I, it's totally true because we, we are, since we, we take a lot of money from the government, that's why we have to be accountable to, to many things. That's why we have well, an we, MA We've heard about his budget. What's your budget? I'm not the chair. That's why I do not oh. know. But, but I know it's... Take it's, a uh, guess. It's quite, it's quite, well, the, the salary is quite expensive. I mean, I mean f uh, for Hong Kong um, education. And... Um, one thing, one, one thing worth mentioning is uh, we do have an MA program which is much relaxed because it's self-financed program. That's why we have more say in this kind of uh, program. Uh, when we take in students, we don't need to look at the academic uh, uh, performance uh, as a first priority when, when they came in. And we treasure more of the uh, experience when they, when they uh, work in the society because many of them are uh, mature student because otherwise they can't really afford the tuition fee. They have to pay like uh, 12, uh, uh, not 12,000, uh, 120,000 for, for the whole program. And, and, and we don't, uh, and, and I really treasure this kind of a student because they do have some other expertise can be shared during the class and can expand the, the, con the, 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 the um, the originally fixed curriculum and lead it to some other direction, which is uh, really, really good. So it's like even we are very much institutionalized in some sense, but we still try to find some, you know, um, gaps for, to, to uh, pursue our educational goal. Um, we have 70% non-German students. So it grew over the years more and more up till the point that we now have to watch that we keep enough German students because um, yeah, that would be also politically dangerous. Then you are a complete foreign body in the city. Um, so, and it's also for the student body interesting that there is enough German students that can kind of like uh, welcome the others, you know, in a certain sense. It's a, State of Shul is a lot about community and about atmosphere. And so if, if uh, the students where, coming where from... Where come from? Asia, America? We have a, a whole... Other. It depends a bit on where professors and other students have ventured, for example. So each time we, we venture somewhere else, we have a whole lot of new applications coming from a specific uh, region. So for example, 
It was Nikolaus Schaffhaus, who never worked with us, but who was running the Frankfurter Kunstverein, who was on a research trip in New Zealand uh, more than 10 years ago, and he convinced Simon Denny to apply for Städelschule, which then Simon Denny got accepted. And since then, we have each year applications from New Zealand. And we have a lot of good ones, and, and it means that each year we have a couple of New Zealand students. We have an enormous uh, influx from South Korea, up till the point that we now are collaborating with a good friend, I don't know if he's here already, uh, Dirk Fleischmann and Park Mi Jo, um, who they founded the Rat School of Art in Seoul. And it's a, it's a kind of an unofficial school. It does the same as the Stedelschule. It doesn't give a diploma. Um, and it's where we try to exchange with a bit and, and see, because we have, we have to say no to so many good South Korean applicants. And so we try to kind of like suggest them to go to the, the Rat School in Seoul, which is try, it's also it's a new experiment. It, it exists since two years, and we are very close connected to them. It's an apartment, and it's seven students. That's it. And, but it's really great. <laughs> Does it have its, its own canteen? Not yet, but the street canteens. You know, the street food in the street is so amazing. So we called it already, already Menza. Mensa of the Rat School. And, and you know, to, to your experience, how has teaching changed? I mean, when we were talking earlier, you mentioned that, um, you know, in the days, a professor would tell the student what he knew and what was important to them, or what's going to be important to them in the future. Now you said with your iPhone, you're connected to everything, so it's not really about information anymore. There's a very different skill set that you need to communicate now. So how, how do you deal with that, that teaching or conveying of information has changed completely? And what is it that somebody who wants to become an artist today What's the skill set that he really needs to take home from, from this school? Actually, in my experiences, uh, in the old time, you know, we, we are able to buy many books and, and collect many images which can be served as our, our teaching material. And nowadays, the student can easily, you know, uh, ask you some, you know, uh, propose some artists uh, to be discussed in the class. Who, to whom, I do not have a clue, you know. It's like so many names, new names, new work. So nowadays we, we are trying to, I, I, my, my, my own practice is trying to, you know, teach methodology. I mean, uh, the method to understand art and to analyze uh, the process of different, different ways of art making instead of providing the solid uh, uh, information. And the other thing is, uh, one thing I treasure very much is, uh, uh, well, there are some characteristic of those uh, information from internet is uh, they give you the images of the final work, and they also you have has some uh, description about the work. But I, in, to my uh, real experience, is that I don't I don't really trust you know the image because one of the reason is uh, uh, you you not you, you just not just recognize the image as a style. You have to. You know, for example, you have to sometimes, you know, like architecture student, you have to rebuild the building, uh, uh, copy from the master step by step in order to understand the internal logic, to understand, you know, something that cannot be described by, sim, uh, by, by words or by image. You need the real experience of practice. I think that still work. I mean, in the 21st century. And the other thing is uh, uh, word, uh, verbal communication could be very mis misleading. One thing is uh, uh, when artists you know, make a, an artist statement, it may not be really what it means, I mean, to the, to the artist, because it, sometimes they need to write some artist statement is because the galleries want them to, because they want to publish some, something. Some art cannot be described through verbal language. So in this case, um, I think the hands-on experience and the genuine discussion in the class can uh, compensate this area which the internet, uh, the internet cannot, some information that, that the internet cannot provide. So I think methodology, hands-on experience still work. I mean, no matter in 
any you know decade, twenty first century or nineteenth century or whatever. I think I don't know how it changed for sure, and you described it very well how it changed. What we do at Stedo Schule is in fact we it we accommodate or tolerate it's the wrong word because in Stedo Schule nothing is reified like that. It's more like all of a sudden the students start to fundraise for a professor. They want a fiction writing professor, which we don't provide, and they ask us and we say no. And then they fundraise themselves and through the back door they make a class. So a lot of the students that come from other classes, they hired Mark von Schlegel since three years now. And, uh, and it's great, now we love it. And so we started to finance that, um, although it will stop also, is this kind of things that pop up. And, but that's a very interesting thing. And then of course we have, mon no not monthly, every four months this professor's dinner and then we are constantly disputing because this one wants that and that one is not agreeing. It's, like, it's very healthy, we dispute like hell. And then afterwards we have a great drink and we are all good friends, but it's, it's very, very good. It's this kind of like a moment and it's not a non-official meeting and it's in the, the dean's office with a lot of great food and wine. And now we dispute about everything and about what is happening with these students. Why are they asking that, etc., etc. What Should we accommodate that, that they want to have a fiction class? And then half of them are against it, half of them are supportive of it, but we don't have anything to say because they hire a room and they put the fiction class, <laughs> you know? And that's very successful now. And, they, 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 and it's called pure fiction. They're invited in biennials now. It's incredible. <laughs> and we wanted to refuse that in the beginning. <laughs> it's really crazy. Um, so I don't know what changed this. We, I don't know if it's really changed, but what we try to... Um, feel each time when such a thing is happening, you know, and, and, and to kind of like play the ball directly and, and to um, be maybe a little bit resistant for the form, um, but then see, okay, this is very interesting what's happening, you know, like that. But to what extent is the faculty students of the students? Because something very interesting that happens in Germany is that when, uh, when you look at an artist's CV, it will say that they studied at such and such a school and they obtain such and such a diploma and then the really important thing is saying such such. I studied with professor so and so so how does that work well, first one of all can in be very, and then also in one, Chinese one can university. be extremely critical about that too because that's what you described before that's part of a market strategy you know mm -hmm. I studied with Simon Starling mm -hmm. meaning oh if Simon Starling took you up in his class and had only 25 students you must be something that's the kind of mm -hmm. trick with these things so the, the structure of the school is old-fashioned, like you say. It's very, very old-fashioned. But we betted on trying to misuse this old-fashioned structure instead of changing the structure. And I think this whole... And that's, why you, that's why you got Douglas Gordon. Yes, um, amongst other people. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's kind of like, okay, it's a structure that has been heavily criticized. Also in Germany, this kind of class system with a star professor, etc. Um, but the, the whole idea is like misuse it from within. Don't, we mm. don't change that structure. We don't want to change it into a program driven uh, thing. Mm. Um, and I think that's, it's, it's fine. It's a lot of, I said, also within the classes, lots of disputes, you know. Uh, but that's interesting. I think that's, it's, uh, when it doesn't become obnoxious, or, then, then it's very healthy. And, and sometimes it's all an experiment in, in how you have to do it yourself, you know? It's like when you want an exhibition, well, organize an exhibition. Don't wait till a curator comes. Don't wait till a gallerist comes. Don't wait till your professor says, now you have to. That's a very interesting thing. We are not merchants in credits, you know? So otherwise, because if we are merchants in, if we are, if we are working with credits, that means they do something and I give something in return. So we refuse the deal. There is no deal. If you don't want to do something, that's fine too. You know, Kreber said, if somebody wants to sit in melancholy for the whole year, that's great. You know, that's the, and that's the kind of... Of course, the professors are very often, um, like Fishley and also Thomas Bayerle said it, learning a lot from the students. So it's kind of like the, the whole notion of proximity with somebody that has maybe a little bit more experience, but is absolutely in the first place a practicing artist. 
So they share problems of practicing artists. We don't want somebody to become a professional professor. We, then we would not hire the person or we would kind of like get rid of the person. If it's a person that kind of like forgets to make his or her art and, and goes into teaching all the time. So we, we really, so they can share experiences from when they were younger or whatever, like, okay, what, what happened? It's a reality. It's also osmotic, you know, like the art world, which is terribly voracious nowadays and, and the market, um, comes into the school, you know, they, that it, it kind of like infests everything. And then of course they can, students, I can ask their professors, okay, what, how, what attitude or what can we do with this? You know, how to deal with that? And maybe the professor said, well, I did it like that. That doesn't mean you have to do it like that because there is no method. And, and I think that sends also the, I think for Douglas or, and for everybody, for Willem or for uh, Fishley, for Fishley, for example, it was very important to come to the school after the passing away of David Weiss in order to reinvent himself. It's great. Willem de Roy did the same after the passing away of Jeroen de Rijke. Yeah? It's these moments, it, we, we also get the people sometimes in very interesting moments in their career. And that's often people that are extremely open to learn from the students, you know? I think Tobias Reberger's Asian career, so to say, was in the beginning pretty much prompted by a lot of Asian students. You know, to start to be interested in what, what is happening in another place, like Seoul. What's, what's the dialectic like between the faculty and students at Chinese University? Well, actually, actually our department is, uh, you know, the oldest uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, we are approaching the 60th anniversary. That's why, I mean, uh, before the year of 2000, we are the only uni university in Hong Kong that provides uh, art ed uh, uh, education for, for artists in Hong Kong. So you can imagine... Uh, many of the al alumni has been, you know, uh, working in many sectors in the society, such as museum and teaching in some other university, working as curator. Some of them become gallerists. So you can imagine that uh, the network in Hong Kong is uh, some, somewhat uh, occupied, especially in early years, uh, by our alumni. There is uh, some criticism, uh, you know, uh, in in a in a in a, in, a, in the past few years, about you know, there's it seems that uh, we have a certain kind of Chinese U has some some sort of um, it's like rejecting newcomer into into the system. But of course, it, it can be happened because uh, in terms of the student number, we're still you know one of the smallest. And for some other institution, they have uh, hundreds of students graduating each year. And, and, and I would say in, uh, many of our alumni is actually working in the institu institution. And that certainly gives some advantage to the, to the uh, uh, fellow student now studying in the program. But uh, I can also see that there, there are so many art space and new opportunity came in. Office, uh, from overseas, and also uh, there were many NGO being found uh, in the art circle, which is uh, it's not a, like a top-down model, but bottom-up level. So uh, I can see there are so many energ energies from some other schools now uh, with um, the struggle of the alumni. I think I think the, the art, the, the I would say the pie, the the distribution of the pie is of the art circles changing and has changed uh, significantly in the past 10 years? Um, oh, there's two things in my mind. Maybe, maybe one first. I mean, to me, to me, sort of the real purpose of, of the art school and the only reason why I was a little bit sad I was kicked out is because that's a place where you meet like-minded people. Because when you're young and you need that dialogue, you need others to test your own ideas, you need, you're not a finished artist, right? You have something that interests you, but you need to formulate and reformulate it, discuss it. So it's an intensely social experiment that happens there. And, um, <clears throat> and I, I, I'm, it's almost a little bit sad to think about it, how the number is actually against every art student. You know, there's, there's probably around the globe, there's probably 
hundreds of thousands of art students right now, that not, not just a very small fraction of them can become successful as an artist and show up here next door. And um, so basically that leads me to sort of almost an ethical question. How can you legitimize <clears throat> educating so many people in a subject that very few actually have the chance to actually become. I actually have a more optimistic point of view over, over that because now uh, I think I'm aware that uh, the student nowadays is more aware of the public realm rather than the art market. Art market is just, you know, just part of the art world. And I can see many of the Many of the, uh, some of my students are doing many uh, different kind of experiments. For example, you know, uh, uh, trying to do something about uh, the, the, the uh, you know, the perma permaculture, you know, farming, and also uh, uh, start some so-called gift economy. You know, their work may not be uh, being seen in the art world, but in many has already merge into the different sectors of the society, different lay layers of the society. Of the society. One, one example is, uh, you know, even one of the ex very successful artists now uh, showing now uh, next door, but also, you know, uh, working as a teacher, teaching the graduate school, at the same time working as a, a security guard. And use, by using this uh, uh, um, identity, He's been, you know, uh, doing some social innovation. For example, you know, uh, thinking about the system and the working environment of security guard. What can what can he do as an artist to, to 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 make a change? So, in that point of view, I think now this artist is making change, uh, trying to make meaning instead of just make beautiful thing or, or eye pleasing thing. So, so I I, I really, you know, uh, as the growth of the civil society, I think, especially in the circumstances of Hong Kong, I think the next generation is quite promising as an artist. Is we, we, I, even I don't see them maybe producing work for, for the market, but they're doing something very important and meaningful in the future. Yeah, I, I could maybe agree with the last thing you said, and um, I, I would formulate that question different, Thomas. It's, uh, the problem today is that globally we have interiorized that uh, success is measured by the market. And we all accept that, apparently, but I don't. And maybe a lot of people don't. There is other ways that success... Uh, what is success? Success is also a, per, a, a demand, you know? The world demands that you are successful. It's not, a, it's not an achievement. I'm sorry. I think it's very much more important what we offer is that, and maybe the ethical question can move there. It's like, okay, we how to run an interesting life, you know, like, and, and even if you are not rich or something. And then there is another thing is that, and of course, that's, that's the paradox. We are so small, we accept so little amount of students, in, in, which is part of the possibility to, to have, in fact, a lot of them the percentage of the successful ones between things is very high because we select very thorough from the beginning. But on the other hand, we also um, provide maybe the beginning of an... It, there, there is going to be an era where we are not able to work anymore because it's all going to be taken over by machines. So to fill in our life in the future and to... I think it's a, there, is, there is a future at hand that would never been imaginable because we are run by all these venture capitalists, but that was imaginable a lot of times. Bertrand Russell wrote about that, a famous philosopher, that uh, when the work kind of load to people gets less because of the automatization, people will do more in creative jobs and in creative uh, kind of lives. And I think in that sense, the I think we need more artists. We don't necessarily need more curators, but we need more artists. On, on that topic, can I do a quick question? Because I need to urgently address the distinct lack of estrogen on this stage. I mean, I'm personally doing my best, but it's not enough. Um, unfortunately, Dorothea Richter was called away at the last uh, moment. And so just very, very quickly, both of you, could you just talk a little bit? What is the, the gender balance in, in your yeah, respective let, schools? Let me, let me add one thing to this, what he just said. Before oh, we you're so competitive. Diff, diff, different. 
No, because what, what, you, what you both just mentioned, and that's really what I wanted to push at, is that we're all in the art world, or in, in the larger scope of things, part of a huge transformation of our society. You know, we don't need bodies anymore that stand at a machine and do this all the time. We don't need anybody that marches like for hours in one direction and follows orders. What we need is a different kind of person, right? And that's, that's sort of what, what uh, that, that first question was actually getting to. In, um, Sorry, I, I just needed to finish that circle of that. The, the, the <laughs> Gender. So, so for, for that different sort of person, read woman. Yes, well, <laughs> mm, I would read it more complex even. <laughs> but anyway, um, students, fine. Professors, problematic. I'm working on that. <laughs> Do you have a final question, Thomas? Or is it well, time to wrap? Uh, Hong Kong, Hong Kong, you know. No, as 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 a male, I mean I mean male student, uh, they they under a lot of pressure. I, and Hong Kong is you know you, you you need a lot of money in order to survive. So we uh, the the ratio is around I would say three girls to one boy. I mean student and professor. Uh, well well yeah, or also male the opposite. dominated. No, no 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 still. <laughs> Still, we have uh, one, uh, out of uh, eight uh, full-time staff, we have uh, one, one female professor. I, I don't know, do we have an audience microphone? Maybe we have time for one or two more questions? Oh, there's one question. Oh, yeah. Could you state your name? Uh, uh, hi, first I'm, of? I'm Mitzi. Actually, I want to do a PhD regarding to art and uh, new media. My question is, in fact, what would be the best way to bring new audience? Like, audience including like new, what would be the best way to bring new audience for people to understand art or to people to go to art school or to change the idea, like what you have, what you have just said that art it could be something else rather than what we have this fixated mind about art in Hong Kong, for example. Uh, I, I personally think uh, art, if you talk about the definition of art or some knowledge about art, is basically about art history and things that happen in art history. This is one thing. But what we are, what we are, what what I observe, where art, contemporary art is going, is uh, trying to merge into the daily life in different levels. So when we talk about you know, audience, we need to define, you know, are we talking about the audience who can appreciate the art showing next door or in the museum, or are we talking about the art, the, uh, the, the kind of art that artists is trying to produce for, for the community? If the artist is trying to produce art for the community, they need, they need to use the language that the community can understand. So if we want to know something, you know, uh, understand some art as defined in the art circle, then we need to, you know, study the language of visual art, uh, uh, especially the art history. Then you can, you know, have more background information. So there was one question here, and then another one there. Okay. Hi, uh, I'm Dora. We'll to you in a yeah, uh, I am. I'm actually a student, like studying in Hong Kong, and I have a really like interesting question to ask. Is like because our professor had told us instead of like studying in uh, MBA, we should study in uh, MFA because like the big firms now, like consulting firms like Baker McKenzie, they want to they want you to like write your report like really in an artful way instead of in a commercial way. Like, is that true, or what's your opinion on that? I didn't get it completely. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> what is true? You no, know no, it's like uh, they say, like the big companies now, like they want a student have like art degree, so they want. Oh, their the, student yes, to, that's yeah, true. I, I know some people that have been headhunted by big companies. Yes, that's true. But is like, that interesting? No, no. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I don't know. No, but it's true. There is a, there is a lot of companies that. But it ha it's a very dangerous thing. I, I'm, I'm going to try to be very brief. You know, like neoliberalism. We involuntarily invented that, meaning that we in the art world are 
mixing free time with work and kind of working all the time and having fun while we work, etc. And that's what they ask from uh, employees nowadays more and more. And and we are to blame for that. And of course, we big companies like people with art degrees because they are so flexible and they can be exploited at the maximum. You know, so it's it's another thing we have to think when we think about what can a school do in audiences. Then part of the program, or not a program, part of the atmospheric gathering of individuals should question those things. Like, okay, we were responsible for inventing neoliberal strategies. You know, they inspired it on us. And how can we go against that again? You know, how can we maybe do something else? How can we really refuse to to be inspiratative for like I know the the CEO of Marimekko Germany uh, she quit now, but she studied at Stelschule because she she was the she's Finnish and the, it's a Finnish company and the, and and they they need these people. You know, it's a, because we are too smart, probably. <laughs> Okay, there was one more question down here, and then I think we have to... Hello. Hi, I'm Wendy. Um, I teach visual arts and theory of knowledge at a high school here. And I guess I have, actually have a bunch of questions, but I'll make it short. Um, I see my purpose as teaching students to read visual culture critically. I also see my purpose as preparing students to study at institutions like CUHK. So, because I have one question for each of you. Uh, sorry. Um, so for Philippe, what do you think, considering that very few, actually very few students make it as artists, what do you see your purpose as in running an art school? Well, I, like I said, it's not in the art school, maybe the students decide whether they're going to be an art, artist or not, because it is the most difficult profession in the world. You have to speak all the languages, you have to deal with the market, you have to deal with the discourse, you have to deal with so many things that are not even art making. Um, but on the other hand, you work with people that become very interesting people, I think, even if they don't pursue a career in art and they they ask these kind of questions it's probably one of the questions i think that has been discussed at many of the more the more interesting art schools is okay why are have we provided the the knowledge for organizing a neoliberal society you know and so that's why i'm against this whole notion of creative industries you know a very dangerous domain yeah it's uh, in fact we we are we should be more recalcitrant all the time, you know. You know, it's a, it's, it's a very let's let's rather go eat instead of putting up creative industries. I or knew we'd get in back to that. <laughs> Can I just ask one more to Kurt? Yeah. Um, do you feel that Hong Kong high school students are prepared to study fine arts at your institution? It's hard to say uh, because our department is uh, complicated. One of the uh, thing is uh, actually we 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 have a uh, we have uh, half of the teaching member are art historian. So they are they, they only interest, maybe maybe they would like to have some student who have uh, good uh, academic performances rather than, you know, in an art subject, in really interested in the art subject. Uh, so uh, I think the education in the tertiary level is actually closely linked to the uh, education uh, system and also expectation in a high school, but I have to say that um, uh, there is something get wrong in the in the high school. I, I'm not saying in the high school or education. I'm talking about the examination system that uh, dri driving the the student to the wrong way. We're going to wrap up there because, of course, you've all noticed that actually we've just got to the very beginning of the conversation which means that we're now going to withdraw to the canteen and if you wish to join us, we'll tell you what we really think. Thank you, Thomas, thank you, Kurt Chan, thank you, Philippe Perot, thank you, audience.